Smith is at the piano. And now, here's Gary. Thank you, Durward. Greetings, friends. Happy Friday. It's mailbag time. And Durward, for your first question, I think you're better qualified to answer than I am. It's from David Hollow of Rockford, Illinois. It says, I am a high school senior and I'm interested in becoming a radio announcer. Would you please tell me what you consider to be the most important qualities a person should possess in order to be a good announcer? Well, first of all, he uh, must be educated, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, should have a background of... Um, a language background would be very helpful. Um, voice, this whole thing about saying, you know, what a deep, resonant voice, that's for the birds, really. Yeah, it, a pleasing it, it, voice is fine. It doesn't have to be deep as long as the voice has personality. That's mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. Um, oh, and uh, no composers' names. Um, I'm speaking now of classical and semi-classical composers. Yes. Um, and how to pronounce? Be them. able to be able to read very well and um, be able to sight read well. Mm -hmm. And uh, sight read, my friend out there in Rockford, Illinois, means being able to pick up a piece of copy and read it right down without a whole lot of rehearsal. And pronunciation is extremely important, and your dictionary is your best friend. Well, uh, Dermot, uh, you were a straight announcer for, for a time. Mm -hmm. uh, it always seemed to me that it was a terrible, must be a terribly dull job being mm -hmm. an announcer because, you know, you're reading somebody else's copy. Uh, well, on the contrary, though, Gary, I found it very interesting, particularly the type of work that uh, that I was doing in years past. You had an opportunity to um, read the news. Yes. You did music shows. Uh, and something that I enjoyed very much was doing a lot of special events work where you went out and described things like uh, parades or uh, uh, political conventions and the like. Yes. Uh, floods, any type of disaster or anything like that. Of course, nowadays, uh, that is not handled by announcers. That's handled by the news department who That's are right. highly trained reporters. Yes, and the pictures change. But the average completely. commercial announcer, I have always, a fellow who does nothing but commercials or just introduces shows, uh, it seems to me it's a dull job. On the other hand, it's a marvelous stepping stone, as you are a living demonstration of, to other things. But being a, a straight commercial announcer, though, is extremely important, Gary, and uh, not as easy as it sounds, because after all, a man is an out-and-out -out salesman. Yeah, that's right. But in your case, uh, you used it to step into, as the a stepping acting, stone. into the acting business. That's right, yeah. yes. And I think that's really what most announcers would like to do if they had the talent for it, if they, if they had that kind of skill. I think so. Yeah. yeah. All right, Ralph uh, Parsons of Toronto, Canada says, I have spent the last month driving across the United States. My wife and I took a similar trip four years ago. We listen to radio a great deal while driving, and I would say the biggest change that we detect in the States in, uh, in that time is that four years ago, everyone was playing bad music on radio stations. Now they're talking, and that isn't too good either. <laughs> is it my imagination, or is there more talk on radio now? Uh, you are very right, Mr. Parsons. There's a great deal more talk on radio. The trend is toward that now. Uh, right here in New York City, one of our leading stations, uh, which is an independent station, marched away from the other stations by having nothing but talk all day long. Nothing think, but talk. I think that they have found is that that uh, what the, uh, the homemaker, in doing her chores during the daytime, uh, enjoys hearing the sound of another person's voice in the room. See you Monday. <laughs> Thank you.